Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us on part two of our cod quest. We'll back down all the time beach in Suffolk and hopefully today we'll get a codling on camera for you. Now if you watch our channel before you realise we came down back in November and unfortunately it wasn't much of a cod quest. We got absolutely battered by whiting. We're back down again today. We've got similar conditions. I'd like to see the sea a little bit rougher than it is, but you can't have it every way. The reason we came down today is because we've got some real big tides. Now we have, for the past three or four days, as many people know around the country, we've been battered by big tides and strong winds. Now we looked through at the forecast and we had a small break. So we picked it out today and everything looked good. We had planned originally to head up North Norfolk and have a go for some flatfish, but that's something you know we can sort of do at any time. So we thought we'd come down and make the most of the conditions and see if we can get a fish or two. Now, we're at the start of January now and we've traveled down, we traveled down this morning. We've got high water about half one and it's now about 12 o'clock. So we've got about an hour and a half before high water, which is when hopefully we might pick up a fish or two. If not, we'll hopefully catch some on the ebb. Now, the ebb tide, I haven't really, really fished much down here on that tide, so I don't know how it's gonna go. I don't know necessarily which tide will fish better, but the only way we're ever gonna find out is if we come and give it a go. So that's what we've done. We've got two rods now fishing at the moment. They've been out for about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm now gonna wind one of them in, just check the bait situation, the crab situation, the little fish situation, just see, see how it's started. So we'll do that now, and then we'll come back and we'll show you a little bit more about the baits we've got with us and the rigs we're using. So we'll see you in a second. Well, that's the first rod in. There's no time to put a fresh bait. And as you see there, as I mentioned before, I had a spare rig ready and baited, clipped on the tripod. So you see there, I was out of the water for a limited amount of time and I've got two rods fishing again. So the same as before, really. The rig, very simple, pulley panel rig. I've got the two Frio hooks like that, the top one sliding, to say that just goes in the top of the lugworm bait. If you if you haven't seen it before, you can watch it on our other video. There'll be a link up in this corner now. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see all the details on it. We've got the same pulley panel and the same impact lead. That's a six ounce version again, again, because we've got a big tide, six ounce helps you cast the extra few yards and really grips in nicely on the bottom. Uh, the baits we've got with us today, once again, we've got the common lugworm. Now, I had, I had someone ask us a question on the previous video. Are these what they referred to as blow lug? And yeah, that is, that is all they are, standard. I mean, around Norfolk, we don't tend to get, you know, the real big fresh blacks or yellow tails. It all, from the local tackle shop, but it tends to be 99% of the time the blow lug. So that's what we've got with us. And also what we have got is we've got something which a lot of you'll have seen before is squid. Now this is frozen squid. It's now in the process of defrosting. It's what they call dirty squid or unwashed squid. So it's not been cleaned. It's not something you buy off the fish counter. This is proper bait for fishing really. So for this rig, I'm just gonna go with standard lugworm. We'll perhaps try squid as the session progresses, but what we'll do is we'll bait up now. Once again, you, you, you want to pick the size bait you want to fish, so say if you're going to go for something about so long, a couple of quick turns, you see that top hook's locked in place, and I will start to bait up. You just, you just thread the worms round, follow the hook, over the knot, and then this top hook just nicks in that worm like so. 
another one we'll probably get I like to fish normally three to four worms as a bait you know some people say that's perhaps excessive but as I said previously the bait is really the only thing you've obviously got out there to attract the fish so I don't like to scrimp on my bait that's the third one Once again, I'd just like to nip that tail off. And there you go, that's the bait. And then it just clips on the red impact lead. So you nick that on like so. Got a, a perfect cod bait there. So we'll hang this one up, and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the second rod and see what the bait situation's like on that. Finding that second rod in, and before, if you watched our previous video, you'll have seen what was probably one of the smallest whiting in the world. Well, I think we may have beaten it this time. Now, <laughs> once again, you look at the size of that bait and the size of the fish, and that is crazy. But we'll get him unhooked getting back I mean he was a perfect size live bait but look at that perfection in miniature we'll get him back and get another get another rig ready get the other rig clipped on and cast out. What I'm going to have to do is, is now the tide's running quite hard, I'm going to have to leapfrog the rod. So the first rod I put out will now go on the other side of the tripod and we'll cast this one up tide. I actually think it's now started to go the other way. So just move it. And then we'll get this one out. So we've got two fishing again. Once again, it's not really a need to cast massive distances. I suppose we're lobbing it between 80 and 100 yards perhaps, but we're in some deep enough water there. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm guessing we've probably got 20 foot, something like that. So it should be okay, but we'll get it out there and then we'll get that spare rig done. Get a little bit of line out, take the rod up to the rest and get it to Both, Both rods fishing now. As I said, we'll sort the rig out and I think it's probably about time for a cutback. So we'll see you in a sec. shelter it's a real strong subly I mean you might be able to hear it on the camera there but the problem with that is is that the tide has turned so at the moment we've actually got the wind and the tide pushing together so that means the lines they're really really hanging out to the left hand side there um, but it should be okay we just make sure we cast a long way up tide let plenty of line out um, 
and they seem to be holding okay. One thing that you want to do as well is if you get you got your lead, if you find that it's, it's tripping out easy, you can just tighten them up and all you do is you, you nip them two bits there, put some extra pressure on and that'll just grip that little bit better. But as yet, no coddling, we've had a couple of little whiting now. So what I might do is you might have a little, a little go with the squid we've got with us. So I'll show you how I like to go about baiting that up. There's a few ways you can do it and there's a few ways you can use squid, but there's one way where you can present a real big interesting bait to the fish. Now, obviously, first of all, you'll notice, take all your old bait off. You see there, stripped all that old lug off chuck that back and see it's no good it just creates a mush around the hook and if anything you might think it's doing you a favor but it's actually not you've got more chance of missing bites and missing fish if the hook points are masked so that's where to start so you set them about so far apart and we'll bait up with a squid now as I said we've got the unwashed squid there's a couple of different sorts I think this is just standard calamari but You'll see it there. Everyone probably knows what a squid looks like. You got the head. Now the head can be a great bait. You can just pull it off. And that there is a perfect bait to tip your lug with. You know, you can fish it in half. You get a bit of movement there with the tentacles. I mean, you can even use a hull squid like so. Rig it on your panels, your top hook and your bottom hook. And that's a great bait for all manner of fish. You know, bass, codlin, skate you know smooth hound any anything will pick it up but what i like to do you put that head down there you've got your main body now so just get my, my board and my knife now what you like to do is just you'll see there's all the, the guts and stuff in there so you just want to push all them out You can do that if you just drag the back of the knife along the squid and work it with your fingers. I mean, this doesn't help. They're still a little bit frozen, these ones, but it's now, it's now coming out. So there you go. There's just like the, the guts and stuff, I suppose, of squid, and they have like this translucent. I don't know if it's a bone or whatever, but you want to get that out as well. And then you're left with a, a nice, soft, fleshy bit of squid. Now, some people would take all this, the the dark sort of skin off I don't bother I leave it on there you know and then all I like to do is you've got in theory here like a squid skirt so now I like to sort of if you lay the hooks alongside and you roughly work out how big your squid is so fish them about that far apart so I'll wrap that round there and then with the bottom hook I nick it in the squid Spread it through. So now this hook is coming through the, the main body of the squid. Just push it over the knot. And there you'll see you've got the squid skirt is on the line. I'll move this out of the way. Now what I like to do is you leave it leave it dangling like so. I then like to thread my worms on, so same as before. probably get free with the with the squid we'll probably just put the free worms on this time so now we've got the, the free worms on there and the squid now what you can do is, is as you'll see there that squid is now encased them worms so have you got a day when there's lots and lots of crabs about or if you just simply want to use a big bait then worms are get you give them worms the extra five or ten minutes fishing time because whatever comes to want to get the worm they've got to go through the squid it, it toughens it up you see there's a nice neat case now obviously you're going to say to me that's all just going to slop down at the bottom end of the hook and be a big mess but what you need to do is if you get some elasticated cotton and you just 
simply whip the squid on. I mean, you don't want to mummify it, you just want a good, a good wrap round. Then it's simply a case, just snap it off. And there you'll see you've got your squid parcel with your worms running through. Now this top hook, as I say, we wrapped it round, we'll just have to adjust it slightly two, three times, nick it through. And there you go, that, that's one way of fishing your squid. Now as you'll see, you have got your worms running inside it, but they're protected by that squid. You've got two lots of smell coming off it. It's a nice compact package, it's streamlined, and it's gonna cast really well. So that's one way of fishing the squid. We'll, give, we'll probably chuck this out next go. I mean, what you can even do is as well, is obviously, the squid had the head on, you can always just add that to it if you want. Personally, I don't like to, I just need to keep this hook point exposed. But we'll clip this on. And there you go, that's, that's a big squid lugworm bait ready to go. So we'll hang this up and then what I'll, what I'll do is, or actually before we hang it up, I'll lay that down ready to go. Now that's, that's one way of presenting, as I said you can already you know, put the whole squid on and don't worry about the worms, but I always like the added centre lug worm. But another way, obviously it's another squid body here, the classic way of doing it, rather than mess about with big knives, just to get yourself a decent pair of scissors and just simply cut some squid rings then cut them in half and just fish a normal squid strip. You can tip that to your, to your worm baits. Cut another one off here. Obviously you can cut it the size you want. So there's your, your little squid ring from the body. Nick the ring and there you go. Now what that does is if you add that, add that to your worm, one, it's going to give it a bit of a bit of extra movement because that's going to pick up in the tide. Two, you've obviously got the added smell and three, you've got the added colour. So just tipping your baits can sometimes bring you that extra fish and obviously put that bit of extra scent in the water. So there's, there's a couple of different ways to present your squid bait. As today we're cod fishing and because I'm a bit of an animal I'm going to go with a big squid wrap. So a pair of 3 hooks, nice big bait, will hopefully equal a nice big fish. So let's get it out there now. It just really picked up now, but I'll just show you another fish on that squid sausage we put out, and once again, another white. Now, I probably that squid and the worm weighs more than the size of that fish, but it just goes to show you. I know I keep banging on about it, but don't be shy about the size of your bait. You see him there, he's just lip hooked, he's come in and had a go at it. Not what we're after, but another little fish. We'll get him back and then we'll get another squid sausage out there. Well, I'm 
pretty glad we've got this shelter up now. The wind and the what seems like a storm is really closing in now. The wind has picked up no end. And you'll see out there there's some fairly hefty waves rolling in. You'll probably hear the wind on the camera. The tripod's now been over one, so we just added a bag of stones on that to hopefully keep it down. And at the moment there's still no codling being caught. We've had lots of little whiting again, but they've, they've been the same size as the ones I've shown you on camera, you know, really small fish. So I just grabbed a cup of coffee and in the shelter really at the moment. But we're now starting to lose the light as well, so I don't know how much longer in honesty we're going to give it because I think after dark it's going to be, be a real problem. And generally as well, you tend to find if you get a real strong southerly wind, it doesn't tend to drop at night the same way as you know a westerly might do. And we've got some real grueler conditions now, but we're going to sit it out for, I don't know, perhaps another hour or something like that, see how it goes. The beach is now deserted as well. There was a couple of anglers fishing further up towards the town and a couple up towards the, the tower there, but they've all gone. And it's the from the water's edge boys are the only ones left. But we'll see what we can do anyway, you never know. That looks that looks more of a cod sea now, but it's hard work. But we'll keep battling away and hopefully we'll see you again in a second with a fish. Again, as we had in the last video, something quite unusual. We've got two fish on the same panel rig. Now, I guess what's happened there is this little fish has come in first, and white and a predatory fish, and I guess this bigger chap has had a swipe at him and hooked himself as well. But you see the size difference. I mean, he'll think nothing of having to go for something that size. They've got big mouths and that appears to be what's happened here. But what we'll do is we'll get them unhooked, we'll get them back in the water and we'll get another bait out. It really is grim out there now. But we can just about hold out okay. So we might give it another few chucks as yet, you never know. But uh, little and large. We'll get them back. Well, they say fortune favours the brave. Well, today, whoever came up with that one is a liar because it certainly doesn't. Um, we've got a real, real strong southerly now. It's almost impossible to fish, to be honest with you. The tripod's blowing about, the shelter's blowing about. There's some real big waves rolling in, and it's just become a complete nightmare. So, what I think I'm going to do is get these rods in and we're going to head home. Now unfortunately I know this is part two of the cod quest and we haven't brought you any cod but you know at From the Wall's Edge we like to show you you know how it is and I'm sure thousands of sea anglers out there will appreciate you know the fish just aren't there and you know if they're not there you simply can't catch them but we won't give up we'll, um, we'll certainly be back and I'm sure before the wind is out we'll have a cod blown from the tripod and I've just about had enough now so thanks for watching and we'll see you again on the next one track the fish so I don't like to scrimp on my bait. What's the f 
third one. Once again, I'd just like to nip that tail off, and there you go, that's the bait, and then it just clips on the red impact lead, so you nick that on like so, got a, a perfect cod bait there. So we'll hang this one up, and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the second rod and see what the bait situation's like on that. Finding that second rod in, and before, if you watched our previous video, you'll have seen what was probably one of the smallest whiting in the world. Well, I think we may have beaten it this time. Now, <laughs> once again, you look at the size of that bait and the size of the fish, and that is crazy. But we'll get him unhooked and get him back. I mean, he was a perfect size live bait. But look at that. Perfection in miniature. We'll get him back and get another, get another rig ready. Hello and welcome to another episode from The Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us on part two of our cod quest. We'll back down all the time beach in Suffolk and hopefully today we'll get a codling on camera for you. Now if you watch our channel before you realise we came down back in November and unfortunately it wasn't much of a cod quest. We got absolutely battered by whiting. We're back down again today. We've got similar conditions. I'd have liked to see the sea a little bit rougher than it is but you can't have it every way. The reason we came down today is because we've got some real big tides. Now we have, for the past three or four days, as many people know around the country, we've been battered by big tides and strong winds. Now we looked through at the forecast and we had a small break. So we picked it out today and everything looked good. We had planned originally to head up North Norfolk and have a go for some flatfish, but that's something you know we can sort of do at any time. So we thought we'd come down and make the most of the conditions and see if we can get a fish or two. Now, we're at the start of January now, and we've travelled down, we travelled down this morning. We've got high water about half one, and it's now about 12 o'clock, so we've got about an hour and a half before high water, which is when hopefully we might pick up a fish or two. If not, we'll hopefully catch some on the ebb. Now, the ebb tide, I haven't really, really fished much down here on that tide, so I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know necessarily which tide will fish better, but the only way we're ever going to find out is if we come and give it a go. So that's what we've done. We've got two rods now fishing at the moment. They've been out for about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm now got them. Uh, the baits we've got with us today. Once again, we've got common lugworm. Now I had, I had someone ask us a question on the previous video, are these what they referred to as blow lug? And yeah, that is, that is all they are, standard. I mean, around Norfolk we don't tend to get, you know, the real big fresh blacks or yellow tails. It all, from the local tackle shop, but it tends to be 99% of the time the blow lug. So that's what we've got with us. And also what we have got is we've got something which a lot of you'll have seen before is squid. Now this is frozen squid. It's now in the process of defrosting. It's what they call dirty squid or unwashed squid. So it's not been cleaned. It's not something to buy off the fish counter. This is proper bait for fishing really. So for this rig, I'm just gonna go with standard lugworm. We'll perhaps try squid as the session progresses, but what we'll do is we'll bait up now. Once again, you, you, you want to pick the size bait you want to fish, so say if you're going to go for something about so long. A couple of quick turns, you see that top hook's locked in place, and I will start to bait up. You just, you just thread the worms round, follow the hook, over the knot, and then this top hook just nicks in that worm like so. 
another one we'll probably get I like to fish normally three to four worms as a bait you know some people say that's perhaps excessive but as I said previously the bait is really the only thing you've obviously got out there I'm gonna wind one of them in just check the bait situation the crab situation the little fish situation just see see how it started so we'll do that now and then we'll come back and we'll show you a little bit more about the baits we've got with us and the rigs we're using. So we'll see you in a second. Well, that's the first rod in there's no time to put a fresh bait and as you see there as I mentioned before I had a spare rig ready and baited clipped on the tripod so you see there I was out of the water for a limited amount of time and I've got two rods fishing again so the same as before really the rig very simple pulley panel rig I've got the two Frio hooks like that the top one sliding to so say that just goes in the top of the lug worm bait if you if you haven't seen it before you can watch it on our other video there'll be a link up in this corner now so if you click on that you'll be able to see all the details on it we've got the same pulley panel and the same impact lead that's the six ounce version again again because we've got a big tide six ounce helps you cast the extra few yards and really grips in nicely on the bottom of a rig clipped on and cast out. What I'm going to have to do is, is now the tide's running quite hard, I'm going to have to leapfrog the rod. So the first rod I put out will now go on the other side of the tripod and we'll cast this one up tide. I actually think it's now started to go the other way. So just move it. And then we'll get this one out. So we've got two fishing again. Once again, it's not really a need to cast massive distances. I suppose we're lobbing it between 80 and 100 yards perhaps, but we're in some deep enough water there. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm guessing we've probably got 20 foot, something like that. So it should be okay, but we'll get it out there and then we'll get that spare rig done. Get a little bit of line out, take the rod up to the rest and get it sorted. Both, both rods fishing now. As I said, we'll 